Welcome, guys. It's another episode of The Neutral Corner. It's Danny Glover with Big Lex. And today, we're joined by the European waterweight champion, D. Allen. Welcome, guys. It's another episode of The Neutral Corner. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Welcome, yeah. D. How you doing? You right? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, going to get to, for people who are not too familiar with you, um, going to learn more about you, learn your story, your journey, and also talk about your boxing career today. So, first things first, we normally start at the beginning. So, like, where, where did you grow up? Where are you from? Like, your parents? And yeah, mm. like your background. Okay, that deep. Um, well, my mum, my mum's from Barbados, and my dad's from Jamaica. Okay, I was I- island girl. Yeah, yeah, I was born over here though. <laughs> yeah. But um, I've lived pretty much in Leytonstone, around Leytonstone and Leighton my whole life, so that's where I've grown up. Okay, yeah. East London. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the other question? <laughs> Sorry. No, I think that was just, it. Just so your early life. <laughs> yeah, just early life. So, what was it like? Do you have like siblings? What was like the area like in Leytonstone? Growing up and stuff, mm. it was all right because we lived um, the other side of Leytonstone, so we didn't live like cattle and stuff like that. We lived on the other other side, so it was it was in between in between yeah. cattle and Beaumont, basically. Oh, okay, yeah, well, those are familiar with those areas. Yeah, it was nice cool. growing up there though. So it's next to Leighton, right? Or was that Maryland, not that side? No, 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 no. the other side. Other side, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what was uh, what's like school did you go and what, what was like school life like? Did you go like nursery before? And what was like early school life like? Yeah, I went Barclay primary school all through. So I went from nursery to year six and then I went late in stone school. Okay, <laughs> so what, what was that like? Uh, late in school is all right. It's, to be honest, it's, it's boring, I think. Like school. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's just the decor of the school. It's like kind of a greeny, brown, peach colour. Um, classrooms and that so it just it just didn't feel like very exciting to be mm. honest yeah okay anything in school that you know you'd say happened that maybe you thought you'd be a boxer or anything like that or any fights you <laughs> went, got into in school i got into multiple fights oh, yeah. <laughs> um, i got kicked out in i think the second month of year 11 for fighting okay and then i went to an exclusion center for about a few months and then i went to a pre-16 okay. at, um Newham College. Any any fights that you would say the person deserved that you want to talk about or, you know? <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't think I should talk about any fights outside yeah. of the ring. <laughs> Let's leave that bit alone. Statue of Limitations. Yeah. <laughs> no, this ain't the DJ Blanchard. But, um, so what was your, so did you have any like favourite, le- I know you said it was boring, but mm. was there like any favourite lessons you remember like maths, yeah. English, mm. science? My f- Three favourite subjects was math, science and PE. Mm. Okay. Yeah, all the kind of active practical lessons. Well, math's not practical, but I prefer numbers than mm. to do English. Like, yeah. Yeah. And you like your physics and chemistry and all that kind of stuff, yeah? Yeah, mm. and biology. I really like biology. And you work with the Bunsen burner and stuff like that? We didn't really do... We've done that a few times, but in mm. our school, I was it was boring. We didn't mm. really do even too much experiments and that, so... Mm. Oh, we, I love Bunsen burner. You know the Bunsen burner? Yeah, I know, <laughs> but we didn't really get to use it. Like, I don't know, the school just didn't, mm. really, didn't really do much experiments. Oh, we just open the textbook and just do whatever it's questions and answers from there. No, I so I noticed you're, you look, you're very athletic, so PE, so what sports day, what was your mm. events? Track and field. i done everything. Mm. So i done, in, when we used to do the Interborough Championships, i done 1,500, um, 800, uh, did I do 400? I did 200 hurdles, 100 hurdles. i done relay, uh, shot put, discus, and I think that was it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, round up. So yeah. what, was, what was your favourite... Um, I yeah. like the 100, 100 and 100 and 200 years. Mm, what are we clocking? What's the time? Oh, I don't know. That's, that, was, that was like in school. <laughs> no, but do you know what it is? Yeah. My friend James Ellerton mm-hmm. ran for GB and he still got the school record. 
mm. for the 100 and 200. Oh, I don't think but he's I'd... a GB athlete. Mm. He's just Broken retired records, this though. year. No, I was quite nippy in my day. Um, I think in 100, I think I've done 13. Okay. Mm. Okay, no, I was, I was more mm. but what shot put javelin type guy. But what was funny is because when I was in school, I was a bit chubby. So guys that used to dust me out, when, yeah. when I linked back up with them, <laughs> in the older days because <laughs> I remember one guy he couldn't even believe I was fasting him I told him it was the extra weight I was carrying man yeah, yeah so no, that's like, like your, your, your son as well mm. he's fast for, for a big use yeah, 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 he's yeah. actually fast so yeah but yeah I weren't really a fast runner I could do distance but still that was mm. really like I was shot put discus yeah. type guy yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. okay so then after you finished the referral unit and stuff like that did you go on to college yeah and what, what did you study there i done mechanics in college okay for about three years and then like my teacher in college he was he boosted us up and he gave me a load of confidence so i thought mm. like obviously when i get out of college that i was gonna it's gonna be really easy for me as a female to get a job as a mechanic and mm. it wasn't so i spent a mm. year when i finished mm. i refused to get any other job apart from a mechanics job mm. But I just didn't get anything. I even offered to just work there for free, but mm. because they have to, just to get experience, have something like actual physical experience on my record, mm. um, to have on my CV. But um, because they have to pay insurance for you to be in a building, mm. it's still some mm. little cost. So it was like, I just didn't get anything anyway. And then after a year, I kind of just got fed up and fell off it. And then I start, went back and to college and studied fitness instructing instead. Mm. What was it like sport and rec? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I did, I did that in college, sport, sport and recreation. What um college did you go to, sir? I went back to Newham. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Newham College. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what was you born in Newham General? No, I was born in Whips Cross. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah I was going to start doing DWE. <laughs> 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 but um, so yeah. Um, so then after you finished that, so then didn't have any luck. Then you did sport and fitness. So. How was that course then? Did you find that interesting? Yeah, I enjoyed interesting? that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then after I'd done that, well, I was still, I was coaching in boxing anyway. So once I got my qualifications and it just made it easier and it was easier to get a job in fitness and coaching. Okay. So what, what type of coaching would you do? Like PT? Mainly boxing. Okay. Yeah, mm. mainly boxing coaching. And then, yeah, I have done PTs and a bit of football coaching. Um, Are you good at football? I used to be, not mm. anymore. Well, you left right for it. Right. Mm. Uh, yeah, I used to be good at football when I was in school. I used to play for the team. Okay. And I was going to join Leighton Orient. Oh. And then I found boxing, so. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie Hearn's team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be, anyway. Yeah. So, um, so then what was your f earliest memories of boxing? Did you used to watch it growing up? Did, like, your dad or uncles used to watch it and you used to see on the telly? Um, it's not really. My brothers, all my brothers older than me mm. and my sisters, they they were doing boxing. Oh, okay. um, and I was, I think when that was when I was a bit too young to go. So they, they've all, my family's all, always done boxing. Mm. But I think it went until, it went until I was 16 that I really kind of took an interest in yeah. boxing. Okay. Yeah. So what was it about the sport? What made you gravitate towards the sport? To be honest, I'd done it because I was, I put on a load of weight. So I was like 95 kilo. Wow. At 16, yeah, because I got ill and then I ended up putting on all that weight and then um, I had a very bad temper as well. So my anger management therapist said it was like, you might as well go boxing because it deals mm. with both. And then after a year boxing, I lost about five stone. And that's when, by that time, I realised actually I actually enjoy boxing and I actually want to fight. So mm. from then, that's when I really did get into it. Okay, so yeah. then what was your um, first club that you joined? Leighton County. Okay. It's um, you know, late in cr cricket ground, late in youth. Yeah, I know late in cricket yeah. ground. Yeah, that's where they're based. Oh, they're based in there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't know that one. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I'm more <laughs> south based. That's why. But oh, okay. I know um, Barking and Dagenham, obviously Repton. Yeah. Peacock. Um, well, I think there's a newer ABC somewhere. Mm, West Ham. Yeah, West, West Ham. Ham. Yeah, as well. So yeah. So then when you went in. What was your first? Encounter. What's your first memory of that that gym, the gymnasium, when you walked in? If, uh, I don't know. My first mem the first day I went there. My first memory of the whole session was because I, I pretty much sp I sparred the first day I was there oh because God. the guy um, who runs it, the, or the guys who run it, um, Jeff Jeffrey Clark and Finn Clark and Finn Harper, they know my family anyway, oh. and they know I can fight. So. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, so I, I pretty much sparred. I sparred some Irish boy and mm. it didn't go great. I, I got angry, he got angry and it turned into a fight in the ring. Mm. Oh, so I, I can't remember. Tough. Yeah, no, not gloves ripped off, but I think he, I don't know if he bust my lip or mm. nose and I bust his nose and then like the coach was like, all right, that's enough, stop. And then he weren't stopping, so I weren't stopping. Like, oh. I didn't know how to box, but I knew how to defend myself. So I just carried on. Shots off to the bell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. No, because yeah, normally, I remember they had me in front of the, the mirror, you know. Mm. Yeah. Uh, wax on, wax off, Daniel. Your first, your first day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mirror, shadows, shadow box in front of the mirror. Mm. Doing a little skip, obviously I couldn't skip. Yeah. But yeah, you don't normally spar. Mm, not not, not the first, first day. Yeah, for a few I weeks. Did, they did um, the beginning of the session. This was like towards the end of the session. So the beginning of the session, they showed me like the basics of mm. boxing and then I picked up really quickly, so. Yeah. And I wanted to spar anyway. Okay. Yeah, well, we all It's quite eager to. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember my first spar, though. It was against a guy called um, Dean Richards from Dulwich. And, um, yeah, I was just trying to, like, windmill. Mm. And he was yeah, he was taking a little bit of liberties. He was loading yeah. up on punches and stuff. Be, but, yeah, he, yeah, was he, he more schooled than me at the time? 100%. Yeah. He had bouts. <laughs> he definitely had bouts. I was a civilian. Mm. So, um, yeah, he'd done what he needed to do. But... Yeah, he couldn't, couldn't, couldn't drop me or hurt me, but yeah, he, he beat yeah. me up. But yeah, he shouldn't have. He, he was going over what he should have. He should have been yeah. moving me around because mm. obviously, when I got more experience and yeah. you know, you get new new people coming, you don't. Yeah, I, I wasn't doing what he was doing. Mm. So I was, yeah. But, so yeah. so um, did you seem like you're spying more guys than girls when you was in the, in the in the beginning or? Yeah, because there was at that club. I was the only theme, the only girl for I don't know how long for quite a while. So when I sparred, it was just all with guys at mm. first. I think when I first started, there was only like six. They used to, they do they still do it now. It's more um, popular now. Um, is it this this girl can box? So mm. it's like every once a month they try and or every yeah I think once a month all the females from all, all the boxing clubs they come together and they have like sparring days and sparring sessions. Oh really? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, I've heard about that's from is that Terry Kelly who does yeah. that from um, yeah. Haringey? Haringey. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to Terry Kelly mm. and um, Brian John. I've known yeah. Terry from when she was at All Stars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, um, my, they're two of my old coaches as well. So yeah, shout out to Brian okay. Terry Kelly and Brian Oh, well, you used to do <laughs> yeah. Harrogate as well? Yeah, so after I left Leighton, I went to Waltham Forest because I didn't actually get a chance to fight for Leighton. Okay. And then I went to Waltham Forest and then I had, I think, seven fights there. And then I went to Harringay and then I f had 20 old, I don't know how many, quite loads of fights there. Mm. Okay, yeah. okay. So yeah, guys like Eric O'Cheng. Um, yeah. Oh, what's his name? A Coley, the one with the plats, the short hench one. Oh. Kingsley. Kingsley. Kingsley yeah. Coley. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man <laughs> like Kingsley. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. All them, all them, like, yeah, yeah. So big them up every time. I remember them from back in the days. So. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so, um, so how did your, um, so when did you have your, how old were you when you had your first amateur bout then? Um, I don't know, 16, 17, 18, 19. I think I was about 22, I think, 21, 22. Okay. And I actually had my first one. So I was trained from like 16 all the way up. So I was training for about five years before I actually had my first bout. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Very long time. Yeah, yeah. So, so how did that first bout go? It was... I was nervous, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But I think the way I boxed, the way I imagined it, it was like quite robotic. So I was quite stiff the first round. And then the other two rounds, I relaxed a bit more. But I really enjoyed it. Okay. Really enjoyed it. You won? I did win, but they gave it to the other girl. Oh, well, my dear. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, the, the judge come up to I'm me like, afterwards. Her coach come like up to that. me afterwards. She come up to me. I was like, there's no way that you lost that fight. And da, 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 da. But, yeah. The That's amateur there. boxing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That happens. It's just boxing in general. Yeah. <laughs> amateurs and amateurs the pros. Is, yeah, there's a lot of robberies. <laughs> mm. Even your favourite fighter, Joe Calzaghe, yeah. Floyd Mayweather, Andre Ward, they all mm. lost in the amateurs, even though they were tied undefeated as pros. Amateurs yeah. will always get you mm. at some point. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. how many did you have in total uh, amateur fights? 34. Oh, okay. 34, I think, yeah. And your, what's your record? I can't actually remember it. I think mm. I lost about 10, I think. Okay. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good record. It's all right. It could have been better because some of the fights that I 
But obviously, when you said like, yeah, you, yeah. Like sometimes, you know, when you've got things going on outside of the ring and you don't really switch off properly inside the ring, so you don't mm. really, yeah, some and of the fights are. short notice as well, like, yeah. you get told on a Monday, oh, yeah, yeah, you've got about yeah. um, it's Friday. So <laughs> you're <laughs> really ready. mentally prepared. I know uh, I've been there as well. Yeah. When you, you, yeah, you've got something completely different going on, yeah, mm. but you take the fight because you just want bouts yeah. to gear up for, say, the tournaments and stuff like that, because mm. that's yeah. what you're really preparing for. So then, did, um, did you win any? I saw you entered the Harringay Box Cup, right? Yeah, so I won that twice. Oh, you won it twice? Yeah, in 2019, mm. I got, um, that's, I think that's the last time I fought. As an, no, I thought it was an amateur thing. Yeah, I think, when was, before lockdown? Was it 2020, 2019? 2019, because 2020 was when lockdown happened, so you probably Yeah, so it was probably 2029, 20, so I got best female boxer. Okay. Mm. So that was, yeah, that was pretty sick. Well, you yeah. got <laughs> stoppages up in there as well. Um, I never, I f- as an amateur, I don't know if I, did I get any stoppages? Uh, I really can't remember my amateur record. Um, but it's a bit harder though because you get like standing eight counts in it, and yeah. then they get to survive. So, mm-hmm. so a lot of them can kind of duck and dive. Yeah, because if you take one heavy shot, then you get a standing eight count. Yeah, mm-hmm. some of them are yeah. dumb shots as well. <laughs> so did you go to did um? Because I know with Harringay they like to go out to like Sweden box yeah. cup and them kind of they go traveling a lot, which yeah. is something which is good with the association with the police and stuff so did you manage to do some of those international yeah, done. yeah. yeah. that was the first time i ever went on an airplane actually with haringey oh, okay yeah. So, yeah, i think yeah. it was to sweden for the golden girl championships yeah yeah I won that one as well. Oh, <laughs> man, man. Come on. <laughs> I like you. are humble, man. Yeah. <laughs> Very humble with me. That's your, that's your Bayesian side coming from. You know, Jamaicans are we're, we're, we're a bit bossy, you yeah. know? So, yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. So then what was the ultimate um, thing? What You said to yourself, well, yeah, now nah, I, I want to go pro now. It's time to... Mm. I want to go pro and... Turn I, over. To be honest, I was always kind of against the pro- not against the pros but I just didn't see like a way for you or yeah like I didn't really know anyone is in that, the pros is that, and is that do you would you say it's because you're a woman or no or is it just you uh, you your, your um, particular I think um, me and circumstances well like it's not really work. me in particular because now I'm learning as a pro it's, it's kind of it's about who you know mm. it really is about who you know um I obviously where I started I didn't come off the back of the Olympics and it's a lot easier when you do come off the back of the, um, mm. the Olympics or you know someone. So it's like, for me now, it's starting right at the bottom mm. and climbing very slowly mm. to the top. Mm. So I'm still working and it's training and it's, it's tough. Like, yeah, I don't it's, really have many sponsors. It's good you've got them straps though, that's going to help. Yeah, yeah, now it is, yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. So then when you, so how did you find your, what, uh, so you got your pro, how did you find him? Like, how did that relationship start where you found like you, decide what coach you're going to go with as a pro oh when i turn as a pro to be honest i wasn't gonna turn over um i think i had my last i don't know my last fight was just before lockdown mm. and i think that was for the the abas but that was i've done um you know you have the london rounds yeah. so you have the london rounds and i got to uh, i think the semi-final i think i was supposed to fight that week well, you'd that start friday the northeast divs first isn't it or do they do divs for women? Yeah, they do that, but then yeah. you have then the, you have the, the London, elite, yeah. the elite championships. Yeah, so mm. they do the London, they yeah. do it in London, and then obviously reg- regional. regional. Yeah. So I fought, I think I fought twice, and I won those ones, and then I was supposed to fight again that week, and then we went into lockdown, and then after that, I was kind of thinking, I'm, I'm kind of done with boxing because I'm not gonna get to the Olympics. That's what I was trying to do. Mm. I got an opportunity, and then I got a serious injury, and then I was out for a year. So, <laughs> and then I never got another opportunity. So for me, it was like I'm not. I put. Like everything based my whole life around boxing, mm. literally. But like, I was working around boxing, so I was working like three jobs just so I was able to leave, go and train, and then go to another job. Because if you're working a nine to five, you can't leave in between mm. or something like that. So that's what I was actually trying to do for years and years. And I was like, I can't keep doing this. I'm not making no money and I'm just struggling. I haven't mm. really got nothing from boxing. So I was going to just Pack quit, to be honest. Mm. Oh, and then my one of the coaches from Harringay, um, John Donan, he called me up and he was like, oh, what are you doing? I'm just like, well, nothing, just working. And that's about it. And he's like, um, what about boxing? Like, you going back to boxing when everything's back on? I was like, to be honest, I'm, I'll go back to the amateurs because I wanted to go back to finish off the ABAs. Yeah. But after that, I was going to be done with it. But he said, maybe you should just give, like, give the pros a try. But I was like, I don't know anyone and like, I don't know any coaches. I don't know. Like, and I've heard a lot of people's pro careers stop because... You've got to sell tickets mm. to pay for your fights and not able to sell tickets, mm. enough tickets to obviously pay for their fights. So then they end up having 
no pro career so that's why I thought there's no point but then he put me in contact with my managers now and um, yeah it's actually worked out yeah which managers is that um, that's Sam Kinnock and Robbie Flynn yeah. mm. so they've helped shout me out, out a lot yeah you can shout them out as well because yeah, they've helped on. me a lot because um, everyone has been sorting out like, my fights and everything like that otherwise I wouldn't actually be fighting okay yeah. so then who's your coach now Coach G. Yeah, yeah, Coach G. So I know him very well. So then going into your fights, I remember, so you had your pro debut, and that was against Milena Koleva, the yeah. Bulgarian. So I see that um, you both went down in the first round, but it ended in the first round. So <laughs> that sounds like some kind of <laughs> shootout. What, what, how, did that, how did that go? So the fans, how that went. Yeah, so the first 10 seconds, she dropped me. So oh. I touched down, yeah. What shot was that? It was two shots. It was, I think it was a, was it a right hook, a, left, a straight right, left hook, I think. Okay. Yeah, but my guard was all wrong. My guard was like down here and my chin was up. So I was pretty much asking for it, yeah. yeah. But I think in that fight, for me, I didn't know nothing about the pros. And honestly, amateurs, coaches, they do, they're, they're, they're not, they're quite against pro boxing. So they're like, it's all fixed fights and it's not real and this, that and the other. And, so I kind of had that in my head that it doesn't, it doesn't matter what I do. Like I, can mm. just, I can win. I can just get in and show my presence and I can win because it's fixed anyway. That's mm-hmm. what I thought. <laughs> so I did go in a bit like... Mm. No. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yeah, so I went in there. Well, you thought it was WWF? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. WWE. It's, it's all play boxing. Yeah, so, so behavior, yeah. <laughs> play boxes. So when I went in, like my, my guard, my hands were like down there. My chin was in the air and she threw straight right and left hook, left hook and it literally rocked me. And then, yeah. It was so obviously, from the amateurs to the pros, what's, did you feel the difference between the glove sizes and? Yeah, the gloves are tiny. Ten yeah. ounces in the amateurs are bigger. Like they got more padding in it. Ten ounces in the pros are tiny. Mm. Well, you'd be eight ounces because you're. Yeah. Well, wait, I fought it? eight ounces when I fought for the WBC, but oh, normally yeah. I wear tens. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. then, so then you, yeah, you touched down. You got up and. Tell us how, how, how it ended. And then I, I, my head was still a bit fuzzy. <laughs> okay. So I took, I think I took another two heavy shots. And I remember thinking, which was when I got knocked down, I remember f- I didn't know what to do. I was embarrassed. Mm. So for me, it was like, at first I felt like just like, kind of just like going, okay, I'm done. I'm hiding away. <laughs> and then I thought, do you know what? No, like you come to, <laughs> to my area, like to London. Mm. This is my pro debut. And if I lose this, where am I going to go from here? I was yeah. like, no, there's no way that I'm going to end it like this. I was mm. thinking, do you know what? I've got five rounds after this one. So if I could just at least get through this round, then I've got five rounds to make up for it. Yeah. So that's, that, that, that's what my actual goal was after getting up. And then um, you have to took another two heavy shots. And I was thinking, oh, I can't take any more shots. Like, I seriously need to, to fix mm. up. Yeah. And then I think I held for a bit. And then when my head cleared a bit, then I started going to work. Because I was thinking, do you know what? The best form of defense is attack. And mm. I know she's going to come for me. So I have to go for her first. So mm. then I just jumped on her. Yeah. Yeah. And well, pushed I, saw, her back. I saw a picture of some big arching right hand. Yeah. There, which made her, <laughs> the, the fat Joe lean back yeah. <laughs> like in New York. I was like, rah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, so when that, did that put her out? For yeah. the, down for the cat, yeah, because that, that knocked her, and then she was being held up by the ropes. And I remember I, I was actually shocked when I threw it because I wasn't throwing it to knock her out, I was just throwing it just to survive. The round. Yeah, to get her off, <laughs> yeah. Mm. And then I threw it, and then it hit. And then I see her, she was like, her eyes just went funny, and then she was leaning against the rope. And I was thinking, and I was thinking, actually, do you know what? I need to carry on. Mm. Like the, the, they said, don't stop until the ref stops you, until any, anything else, anyone mm. stops you, the ref stops you, or the towel comes in, that's when you stop. But until then, don't stop. So then that's it's when I threw like my four punches. I think mm. I landed two. And then the uppercuts, I missed the uppercuts. But, yeah, yeah, but the, the stoppage, like, yeah. yeah. No, that was serious. That, that, that was good. That sounded like a, a mad one. Mm. So <laughs> then, um, then afterwards, you... And then, funny enough, that uh, Milena Koleva, so you took her out in the first round. Yeah. And the thing is, she's been... She's a like well-experienced operator because she's been in with women like Laura Spartson, Katie Taylor, Delphine yeah. Pursoon, mm. Kiara Svensson, and Fizz... Firuza Shiropova, the one who fought Katie Taylor, and she went points with all of them. Yeah. And then you took her out in the first round, and she went nine rounds with Maiva Hab- Hamadouche, the one who I thought, uh, I thought she beat um, Michaela Mayer in their yeah. fight. And mm-hmm. um, Caroline Dubois, she went four rounds mm-hmm. with Caroline, Caroline Dubois, so you, you took her out the quickest, so yeah. that's some going. Yeah, mm-hmm. right there, Thank so. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then um, your second fight, you was fighting an unbeaten fighter from Portugal in Matilda... Contreras, um, so yeah, you've got you've been ma- you get it's like you're getting matched hard quite no, quickly. quickly. So, yeah. um, 
Because when I when I came in, that's what I said. So I was like, oh, she's only had six fights, and uh, yeah. um, yeah. I bought you like one European, and uh, so you're making waves yeah. quite quickly. Yeah, mm. straight in at the deep end. That's, yeah. that's yeah. the story of my life. So it's like fast tracked, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so then, um, yeah, you, you took her out in the I think fourth round. Yeah, and then in your was it your fifth fight? You fought for the WBC full in, fight. Yeah, full, full fight, fight yeah. WBC international. Um, that was against who was that against again? Cindy Reyes. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And funny enough, she had the same record as you: five yeah, and zero, oh, yeah. three KOs. Cindy Reyes. So, how did that one go? Because I saw yeah. you dropped her in the third, and then that uh, went to ten round ten points. Rounds, so, how was yeah. that going the full distance, like championship? It, distance? I needed it to be honest, because I, like, I can't just keep mm. knocking them out. Before then, I only went I think four rounds the most, so it was good to actually get ten rounds under in my uh, under my belt. Um, she was hard, not hard, but like she she had a lot of heart, mm. and you could really see that she's fighting just like me. Like there's there's you're not going to give up, even if you get get knocked down, you're going to get back up and you're fighting because you're really this is your career, this is this is life for us, like this make or break kind of thing. Like mm. if I don't box, what else am I going to do, kind of thing. So she just kept coming, like she was relentless. She just kept coming and coming and coming the whole ten rounds. She just kept coming and coming and coming. But yeah. it was good, a really good experience. And to be honest, I do enjoy fights like that. Yeah. yeah. So that was on the black box. Global show was it? Um, I saw a post. I think that was because mm. I saw what, you was scheduled it, for it. Was it in Tolwa for Kent? Um, I don't know if I ended up fighting it that kick, one's kick it I up a notch or something. At Grey's, I think I fought mm. for that one at Grey's Civic Hall. I think it was supposed to be somewhere else, but then I don't know it what happened to that show. But yeah, then it ended up okay, getting yeah, moved. I remember seeing the poster for the dealing what that you was fighting for that belt. Yeah. So maybe it, yeah, it probably got moved or something. So. Oh. Uh, so you, I know you said you went ten rounds. How do you feel about the two minutes and the three minute rounds, the women and the and the men's? What's your take on it? You know, because I personally think women should be fighting three minutes. I think we'll see yeah. better fights, in my opinion. How do you feel about it? I'm not too sure. I think it might it might slow it down. Yeah, that's what that because uh, that's what I want. Not slow it down per se, but yeah. you have people thinking more, like. I see when you've seen Katie Taylor f- fight. I see a lot of boxing, but it just seems like a little, a lot of amateur kind of style yeah, boxing. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, Frantic. yeah, like, but and it's made, taken away from her skills that people think she's. But she is skilled. But I think if, like, for instance, Natasha Jonas, I think she'll be a better fighter on over three minutes. Yes, but Katie said that she don't want to do three minutes. I mm. think maybe because she feels her style is better, better suited, suited for yes, yeah, because yeah. yeah. she can't keep doing that. Yeah. It's gonna wear <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah. She's tired as it is. Uh, uh, you know what I mean so but, but like, what's, so her, what's her name um, yeah. Amanda Serrano mm. is the she's the main yeah. advocate for, for three minutes, three yeah. minutes. Yeah, and she's, she's done, done it the other, yeah. the other week so would you would, would you want to yeah. see that changed um, permanently I'd or are you okay with the two minutes just coming I'm, from I'm a, okay. a woman's boxer's point of view I'm okay with the two minutes because I'm kind of used to fighting the two minutes mm. now um, I've sparred three minutes it it does feel that like, extra minute does feel like a little longer it's kind of like okay like is this three minutes five minutes kind mm-hmm. of thing but um i don't know if it will make it kind of a bit boring because mm-hmm. i think with the two minutes it makes it more exciting because you know you haven't got much time so you mm-hmm. have to go to work there's mm-hmm. no big pauses and stuff like that you've just got to get on with it but i don't know if the three minutes will slow it down too much mm-hmm. it would only be trial and error yeah, <laughs> well, not, not all like sports are the same like some sports are some sports aren't like you know see so tennis they do two three sets two sets men's do go up to three five you know yeah yeah so, so we'll, we'll see in the mm. future yeah, yeah yeah what happens there but quick sponsor shout out to ragatonic we've got the new white rum edition this is the overproof 63 percent raga oh, wow. uh caribbean white rum overproof distinctive premium rum an exceptionally smooth tasting premium overproof Caribbean rum. Uh, let me so, yeah. let me test that out, man. Yeah, we're make, have to test this out. Make right? sure yeah. make sure it's solid, see, man. Yeah. You know I'm an African man, so I need to see what the, the Caribbean rum's saying, you know what I'm saying? Not too much. <laughs> Not too much. We'll see what they say. Ain't all the rums from the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> no, not all of them, you know. It's some from Maj- the Fiji. Maj- 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 majority of them from yeah, a Caribbean yeah, yeah. rum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what it's what are you the um uh, so you are Appleton's or a um, Coxburs person? <laughs> Ray nephew. Ray <laughs> nephew. Oh wow, 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 wow! You're, yeah. you're not messing about. <laughs> wow, wow, wow! 
Chase, what, what Chase are we doing? Well, many other man. You go Ting, that's fine. Ting, yeah, yeah, let's go with the Ting. Obviously, we're keep, not promoting keep, keep fighters island. to do this. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, so, yes. But, um, yeah. And then also, we've got the black grape. This is the Raga Tonic wines. Black grape, cherry, and blue raspberry flavour. This is yeah, also... I had that blue raspberry name. last time. Nice. Very nice. An amazingly smooth, flavoured premium tonic. One taste, one love. So shout out to the collab drinks, Ragatonic, and also shout out to the show sponsor, Treasure Boxing Club, Ashley Fear of Pain. Big ups every time. Yeah, big up, so, Ashley. Yes. So back to the, the, the boxing. So then that was your full fight. Then you had another fight, the fifth one, and then... You how did yeah then you got into how did you end up getting a European title shot because I saw you yeah. UK number one yeah you you've been um you know trying to look for fights and stuff like that so yeah how did the European title shot come about in France um so initially Bavo um was it Kirsty Bavington had it and then because I think after my full fight that put me in mandatory position for her um, mandatory defence mm-hmm. so I was supposed to fight against her and then. She ducked and dived, to be honest, and then she fought... Laura Price. Um, no, she fought Cin- some girl from Canada, Cindy... Oh, Cindy... Um, not Cindy Rose, no. No, it's the Cindy with the eye in it. I yeah. know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she yeah. fought her. I think... I can't remember what belt it was. Was it WB for that one or something? But then she lost that fight, and because she lost it, she got stripped of the title. Yeah. So then the EBU became vacant, and I was the mandatory challenger. Okay. And then it was just about finding another challenger. So then we went through, I think it was, so first it was supposed to be Kirsty Babbitt, and then uh, another French girl. Um, I can't remember her name. I think it was Kingdom Magda or something like that. Okay. And then she turned it down. And then who was else? Who else was in the running? Lauren Price. Okay. Mm. And then they didn't, they didn't put up their purse bids. Put up their purse bids. So then that didn't go through. And then what's her name? I can't remember everyone's name. The girl I just fought. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Marine Bruce, Bruce. Is it Bruce Champ? Sorry, I'm probably not it pronouncing is. it. Uh, da, 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 da. Marine Bouchamp. Bouchamp. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then. Then I was supposed, yeah, supposed to fight her for it, and then I think I was supposed to fight Lauren Price for it, and then it went back to her, and then finally happened. It was supposed to happen on October the seventh, then a date moved again to November the third, and then it finally happened. So it's been about it took about nearly nine months before I actually ended up fighting for this Europe, European title. But I was supposed to fight for it earlier in the year. Okay, yeah. and by the way, I've got these are notes, guys. This is not box rec. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> box rec. So um, her being a French, she's French on it. Yeah. yeah. So using a back court, backyard. How yeah. how did that go? How was that? And let us know where you done camp for that fight as well. So I was in, I was actually in Canada the first three weeks. Oh, of whereabouts? My fight in Montreal. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. the French part. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's French and English. It's not English. the deep, deep French part. Oh. So Quebec they, is deep, the deep, deep, no? Yeah. 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 So I was sparring. Um, the Turbiev. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Uh, uh, Mary Spencer. Oh, okay. Mm. So I was helping her out with uh, her fight that she just had. Oh, okay, and okay. And obviously she was helping me out as well. Mm. Yeah, she's so a big there. puncher, man. Puncher, yeah. yeah. So how, I, how was I, that? I, I ain't going to lie. When I went over there, I, was, I said to my coach, you know what, <laughs> she can bang. Yeah. Yeah. Not as hard as me, but she can bang. Oh, okay. mm, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on, talk the things. Talk up the things now. <laughs> so, but yeah, tell us about how that sparring went. Obviously don't, yeah, yeah. don't reel too much because sparring is sparring, yeah. but... How do you feel that you accounted yourself with someone who's because she's a experience yeah. that she's got a lot of amateur pedigree yeah. as well as yourself and experience in the pros as well and she um yeah she was like a world title contender yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so sparring that sparring was tough I said to my coach like this is the toughest sparring I've had with yeah. a female so far as a pro mm. and like she can like I said she can bang yeah, yeah. and to be honest I liked it it was weird but I actually liked it it was just, it's finally like kind of like a 
a, a challenge for me. Yeah. I, I like the hard sparring, the hard fights. I think it's more exciting and more fun. Mm. So I did take a few shots, like my jaw, body shots. You and gave that, it as good as you got. It was yeah. weird because yeah. I was like, I was happy. Like I, I, it's, I think I am weird. Like my jaw was a bit for a, a couple of weeks. My jaw was a bit funny, <laughs> but I was like, I like it. Yeah, and I, I had a body shot, and I was like, Do you know what? It hurts, but I feel proud. It's yeah, like builds like, character. Yeah, it's like war wounds. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like David Hay said that he didn't feel. That's the most he felt alive when he was actually like getting dropped by Bellu, even though he was mm-hmm. he had like one foot. He yeah. said like the adrenaline, like he just felt like everything was. Just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, was he said it was a weird feeling. So yeah. So did yeah. she? How did did she say that? How she rated your power as well? Yeah, she said I can bang you. No, okay, well, there, <laughs> yeah. there you go. That's the. Yeah, six, it was six. really good, really good sparring though. Mm. Yeah, I was there for three weeks and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. And in the fight, um, uh, the circle was um, fighting in her backyard. How how was that? Um, how did you find it? And wh- when did you go out to France? Was it on the week I of went, the fight or two weeks? No, I went uh, I went on the first and then waited in the second, fought on the third and then we came back on the fourth. Oh, oh you, so you went on the week of the fight? Yeah. Oh, okay. Was, oh, okay. <laughs> two days, yeah. Two From days Canada? Before. Oh, no, I went um, I went Canada um, the first three weeks of my camp. camp. Oh, I gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. And you so only lost in London. Yeah, and I came back to, to London with my coaches and then we went to France like you, four days before. You were a before. star playing? How'd you get? Playing. Playing, okay. So we went to Switzerland and mm. then Got picked up from there, and it's like two hours back to the south of France. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah. oh, the nice part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all right. <laughs> so then, how was fight week for you then? Like, for, for being in like a uh, build up like that, how was that? Any it was. It was weird. It's yeah. the first time I fought abroad as a pro. Mm. Um, I didn't really enjoy it, to be honest. No. It's like no, nah, because like I didn't have the foods that I want. I couldn't mm. do the same routine that I want. It was just. Was you eating snails, the, the and, and ham? No, <laughs> no, they had that. <laughs> but no. <laughs> They had that. That was part of breakfast, but no, that weren't what I was eating. <laughs> that weren't what I was eating. There was. It was like I think the day after the well, the morning of the fight, we actually went out to go and look for some breakfast. Like, but mm. then that's all that was there, like croissants and pastries and mm. sandwiches and that. So French fries. Mm. Ended up going back to, back to the back to the hotel and just having a bit of cereal. Mm. And, yeah. Next time you got to bring. Was that like, So what was you eating that like, throughout the whole week? Was you? Um, I asked for what was it. Like chicken and mm. like potato because I didn't want I wanted like just potato like wedges or mm. mashed potato or something because that that helps for me that's what I like to eat sweet potato before mm-hmm. a fight but um and they end up just giving me just fries so mm. yeah yeah it went great next time you gotta <laughs> bring your tins of aki and calories. yeah I should have done that I was thinking to myself I should have I don't know why I'd, uh, in the amateurs I used to do that I used to take my food abroad and put mm. it in a little cooler and put it in my bag and then mm. by the time I get there normally the hotels have fridges as well so mm. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 I should have done that well, it's a learning experience mm. but yeah. Do you, so do you feel that that fight in France, so do you feel that the amateur experience you had where you went out to the Sweden Box Cup and some of that yeah. stood you in good stead for fighting away? It did and it didn't. It's different. I don't know, mm. it's weird. It's different as a pro. Mm. I think you just require more for some reason. Was that because of the, like, the whole week was like, dedicated to the but the amateurs it's not like that yeah I think yeah I think it is actually I think yeah. with the pros there's more build up like mm. it builds up from the time you find out you're fighting it's kind of like it's building up mm. you find out well three weeks before sometimes I find out but eight weeks or ten weeks before you find out and mm. then everyone else finds out and then it's like it's always it's a build up all the way through mm. so with the amateurs it's kind of you no know. one like really supports the amateurs as much they'll come and watch the fights and, and what not but it just doesn't feel like it's more fun. Mm. And I didn't realise it then, but it is more fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's more like, it's, it's, it's not so serious. So you don't, not, you don't not, not take it serious, but it's less pressure. That's yeah, how yeah, it's, yeah. Less, it feels like less pressure. Did um, Bouchamp have a lot of fans there? Yes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I saw you dropped her in the f- first round. First the round, round. Yeah, yeah. So then it went to the 10. I saw she was battling back because I saw like highlight clips yeah. on like um, the coach's story. Yeah. So then, how yeah, how was that like where you had to dig deep and yeah, tell us about like the fight overall. It was. I feel like I should, uh, the fight it should have been stopped after that because oh, I yeah. feel the counting wasn't the greatest, but mm. we'll we'll get there and um, we'll find out eventually. Um, but um, it, like I said, it was different being over in another country. It's the first time I fought in another country as a pro, so I feel like I didn't fuel up enough. And towards the later rounds, I was really tired. By around ten, I was really tired, and I really had to dig deep. Mm. But I managed to get through it. Yeah, persistence beats yeah. resistance. Was the tiredness for anything in particular? Did you cut any corners in training camp, or would you say? No, I think that I just didn't feel. I didn't eat enough mm. before the fight. I was a little bit tired because um, it has been a long camp and mm. a tough camp. 
um, before that. But you think over, overtrained or yeah, a little mm. bit. But like I said as well, I didn't eat. Uh, I definitely didn't eat. I didn't eat what I normally eat before every fight, and I didn't feel like I. I had energy at the first. I think I blew myself out a little bit in the first round, mm -hmm. and so by I don't even know what round, maybe eighth round or something like that. I was just like there was nothing. I, there was no reserves left. <laughs> like yeah. I felt like every all my food and everything, energy levels were just like dipped completely. Awesome. But I just knew that I didn't want to lose, so just keep going. Yeah, I hear <laughs> that. So I, I heard you talk about earlier that you had you suffered some injuries and like I saw I saw somewhere that you said that you ended up paralyzed for, yeah. for a bit for so yeah what happened exactly yeah. so that was when i was 14 14 15 i think i was in year nine mm. and i was actually in the interborough championships i was running a 1500 meter race mm -hmm. and halfway through like i felt weird but i've never up until then i never collapsed or anything in my life fainted or anything so i don't know what feeling that feeling was so i was just like for me it's once you start something, you have to finish it. And mm. I didn't want to be embarrassed because if I, if I collapsed when I felt like, that, like collapsing, then I was thinking, you know what? Everyone's going to think you can't handle it mm, and yeah. you shouldn't have run the race days. and it's going to be embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. So I was thinking, yeah. you know what? It doesn't matter what's going to happen afterwards. You just need to get your ass across the finish line. Mm. So I just kept running, running, running. And I think I t <laughs> that was like the, sec uh, the second to last lap. Mm. And I even sped up on the last lap, even though I felt like, oh, I was thinking, you know I need to finish, I need to finish, I need to finish. And I literally stepped over the finish line and then, and then I collapsed. And then um, I woke up in hospital and... Oh, yeah. Cause I didn't know where I was. Like one minute I was at the track, and then I was at the hospital. Um, it was pretty scary. So I, I remember I just tried to get out of there as soon as possible. So I jumped off the table, and then my legs, I couldn't like just drop to the floor, yeah. and then I just couldn't walk from then. And how long yeah. did that last for? Um, it took nearly about a year and a half before I was off crutches. I think. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was in I was in hospital for yeah, a what year. What was the uh, like? What was it? What, what happened to you? Do you know or? The they yeah, yeah. they just said it was just like down to exhaustion, but well, two and a half years for exhaustion. They said like because your body was just exhausted, like yeah. and um, yeah. I think they said maybe I had like an illness or something at the time, and my body's way of protecting like itself was to just get shut rid down. of yeah, shut certain things down that's not as important, like your organs mm. and everything. This this bit is all important, but your limbs are not as as, as important. So it just put all the energy into the rest of my body, mm. get me better and. My legs suffered for that. Yeah. So yeah. what was the, did you have to do any physiotherapy? I've done what that was the every recovery like? Day. Every day. Yeah. Five days a week and then I had the weekends <laughs> off. So I was in hospital for about a year. I was in Witch Cross for, I don't know how long. And then they moved me to UC, UCLH. Yeah, in Holborn? When it, um, in Houston. Houston, Houston, Houston yeah. yeah. That's where my son was Yeah. Born. Oh, is it? It's yeah. a really good hospital. I was there yeah, when it first, when it first opens. I was, yeah, that's when was I was like, there. I'm not going to now, but we drove all the way. His mum. <laughs> We drove from Plasto all the way there. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, just to get... <laughs> <laughs> not even, not, don't trust Whitechapel. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Even, what's, what's right there? Newham General's right there. She oh, like, no, not like, that no. one, but I normally go um, Roll London, if anything. London, yeah, I'd rather yeah. go there. Yeah, I want to go Witch Cross, I want to go Newham, I'll go Roll London. She's done all her research and said that was the best one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, yeah, no, that's a, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's a mad thing to happen, so... Um, mm. But well, yeah, glad we glad you recovered. Yeah, glad and you yeah. recovered, made yeah. a speedy Thank recovery. You. Yeah, and now you're the WBC international and European champion. Yeah, champion EBU. Yeah. yeah, so that so that puts you in the top ten in all the governing bodies. So yeah. what are you looking to do from here now? Do you Start calling some of these girls out, man. From here, yeah. probably. <laughs> Have you got I your eye on? <laughs> yeah. You, who, who wants that smoke? Uh, well, uh, whoever's got the belts, I've got my eye on. Mm. Well, that's I know McCaskill. McCaskill. Sandy Ryan and Natasha Jonas has got one of the belts as well, mm. world yeah. titles. So, yeah. three of them. Mm. And once I take my belts off of them, my belts off of them, mm. then <laughs> they're keeping it warm for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can think about going up to deal with the super world. Mm. So, <laughs> are you? How's weight at making weight at the moment? Making weight's all right at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good mm. for the weight. I'm a super well or a well weight. That's mm. my two weights. I don't no, think no, I'll ever know, do. No salads, no grass. This, you're right. You're good salads, but nice salads. Oh, not okay. like salads that I had in the amateurs. It was just literally just <laughs> salad yeah, like yeah. grass. Yeah, cool, cool. But no, I see you when you're doing like the, I see you doing the, the weights and stuff like that. You're doing some good, some good lifts on the on the deadlifts mm. and, and stuff like Thank that. You. So you're training, you know Brain what I mean? Hard, the, yeah. the legs you look do, strong, everything. Yeah, you right. do your own strength and conditioning or you got no, a coach? I've got an S&C coach. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, your training looks serious. I've seen the videos, man. So, yeah, no, keep it up. And, yeah, well yeah. done for everything you've achieved. And Thank mm, you. Well done for catching the um, European Championship as well, your last fight. Thank you. 
And then is, are you going to look to defend that next? Or yeah, I'm sure, guessing sure when you get a strap, sure. <laughs> you feel on you. <laughs> I've got to defend it. I don't know how many times, but I know I think at least twice, I think. Mm. And then I can look for the world titles. Mm, okay. okay, that's good. So what did you think of that run, by the way? Well, yeah, man's done, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he liked it. He liked it. Seal of approval. Yeah. Shout out to Ragga. It's very smooth. Very nice. Top of the pops. Yeah, People, yeah. go to ragga.com and you will find the um, the drinks there. Oh, get a <laughs> promo code soon. Sixty-three percent. Is that what you put in my chair? <laughs> <laughs> Where's, the, Where's the little nozzle on the top? <laughs> on this yeah, no nozzle. Listen, it's the first batch. <laughs> so yes, we're now going into the penultimate oh, round. I'm a tipsy one. Oh my god! Oh my god! god. Oh my is it penultimate god. round? Yeah, we're getting you, into the penultimate. You, you know what? That's about yeah. No. Be, be careful, man. It's a series it, of questions. Yeah, it's, it's setting um, up there, man. A series of questions you just give like an answer. Okay. So we start off easy. So red okay. corner or blue corner? Blue corner. Left hook or straight right? Straight right. So for glove brand, yeah? Yeah. Everlast or fly? Everlast. Cleo Rays or Grants? Grants. Yeah, I like Grants. I like Rays. That weren't part of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that weren't part of it. What did you say? I said, yeah, Cleet or Razor Grants. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're making me feel like that. Not too much. I put the wrong gut to me, sir. Uh, rival or winning? Rival. For boots, like boxing boots, Nike boots or Adidas boots? Uh, say neither. Say neither. Mm. Oh, what one do you wear? I prefer the Everlast ones. Oh, that's the next question. Oh, okay. That's the next one. <laughs> so, if if you add Nike and Adidas, I probably put Adidas ones. Yeah, that's all I used to wear. So, Everlast or Lonsdale? Ever, Everlast. Yeah, you yeah. kind of gave that away. <laughs> um, York Hall or AO Arena? Um, Wembley, Wembley AO Arena. Yeah, Wembley AO Arena. In Wembley. Copper Box. Or O2 Arena? Um, copper Box. You've been to any fights at O2? Yeah, I have been. What was the last one? Yeah, I, I, liked, I, liked, I liked the Copper Box. What was the last fight you went to? The last fight I went to was in Wembley. That was... Uh, you know Shannon, Shannon Ryan was fighting, actually. I went to oh, okay. That's the last one I went to in Wembley, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Two-pack or Biggie? Two pack. Nas or Jay Z? Biggie or Damon? Nas. Oh, I like that. Ali or Tyson? Oh, one that's that's the one behind you. That's a hard <laughs> one. Um, nah, I, if I, if you start to ask me that, obviously whatever uh, what he's standing for, I love my Ali, but look, the lifestyle. I know, but I I I'm, I'm normally I'm, I'm thinking the same. I know, I know, because it is. I I'm all, I rate both of them, so I've never really picked. It's always them two, so I don't really. I don't. I, uh, oh, well, a draw both of them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jack Johnson or Joe Lewis? Joe Lewis. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard or Sugar Ray Robinson? You gotta pick the first sugar. <laughs> You gotta put the first sugar. Oh yeah, yeah, I pick yeah. Sugar Ray Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Michael Buffer or Jimmy Lennon Jr. I haven't heard of them. They're the ring announcers. So um, one goes let's, that, let's that's get ready right, to rumble. That, yeah. And then the other one. Showtime. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, Joe Lewis. Which one? Michael Buffer, the ready to rumble guy. Yeah. So Michael Buffer was that guy's name? I forgot his name. Jimmy Lennon. Jimmy Lennon Jr. Jr. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So did his dad used to do the same thing? Who Jimmy? Mm. <laughs> I think he did, but that was way before yeah, we yeah. was born. Um, so for <laughs> fights, who would you pick in these fights? A Terbiev or Bivol? Terbiev. Um, Canelo hmm. or David? No, sorry, we're going to do next week's fight. David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andrade. Skills one. pay the bills. I hate doing these fight predictions. Things. <laughs> They're in America, don't worry. They're not going to... I've got Andrade. Have you? I've got Andrade, man. My first starter's got um, Andrade. 
I'll go and join yeah, still. I'll go with the majority then, yeah. yeah. Well, I've got David Vedder Venus, but okay, you free, okay, you'll see. You'll see. Um, Devin Haney versus Reduce Progress. Devin Haney. Uh, Chris Billum Smith versus Master Dyer Pattaya. Oh, huh? I thought it was Master Nick. Nah, nah, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> don't go on, you think? Chris hey, yeah. Come Smith. on. Fury or Usyk that got announced this week. Ooh. You on the fence on that one? Only because, like, I know what the way boxing is. Mm. <laughs> so that's the thing. Mm. But so Usyk, like, I would say Usyk, mm. but the way boxing is... I was going to say, if someone had a gun is, to your head, so who would you pick? Yeah. Pardon? If someone had a gun to your head and said, pick one, who would you pick? Usyk? If, if there was, like, hold a gun to my head yeah. and then if I got a bet on them, yeah. I'd probably pick Tyson. Oh, Tyson, okay. N- yeah, because it's boxing. I know mm. what boxing's like, and mm. they love Tyson for this that oh, way. So corruption. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but I would really rather go for Usyk. <laughs> Even though AJ and Wilder both got um, Different separate fights, fights, respectively, yeah. But when this one, they're looking to do this one next, so who have you got when it does come off? Andy Joshua versus Deontay Wilder. If they make it, though. Uh, okay. <laughs> that one is hard. Um, I would say I like AJ. That's the thing. It's mm. not about he like. <laughs> um, if Wilder comes with that craziness that he comes with in the big heavy yeah, thingy, that, then the I don't know if uh, um, AJ will be able to kind of deal with that wild mm. unorthodox boxing. So I think Wilder. Um, and then we've got rescheduled also. Uh, Joshua Boatsy versus Dan Aziz. That's in mm. February. So yeah, February. Boatsy. Um, so for women, Chantel Cameron versus Katie Taylor too. Who have you got in that one? Cameron. Yeah. Savannah so Marshall repeat. versus Shadesha Green. For the super middleweight. Um, Shadesha. Yeah, same as me, to be fair. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. BMW or Mercedes? BMW. Mm. Audi or Lexus? Audi. Mm. Rolls Royce or Bentley? Rolls Royce, Bentley. Uh. It's a hard one. Yeah. So you're um. visualizing what you're gonna get when you get. To <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of actually. Thinking, what would I like to be seeing? I was. <laughs> I think Bentley's may suit me more because it's got more of the curves. Yeah, um, I like that, I like. Yeah, maybe Bentley. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so for men, what's more important, height or build? What, for my preference in men? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Build. Mm. Bald or locks? <laughs> I'm not really bothered, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. But, Skin um, fade. <laughs> yeah, let's just do bold then. Yeah. Looks <laughs> or money? Uh, looks ripped or dad bod ripped love of your life or career of your dreams career of your dreams has to be Oh, she looks so Career, career, do you know okay. no. <laughs> career of my dreams. Oh my that took God. long. The, the, the Some things I have to think yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, true, very true. So for music, yeah, yeah, that's true. You got at least think you like you don't think of it. It's a hard decision. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, you're giving me things that I've never normally think about on a day to day basis, and now it's making me actually think about it. So you give me a couple of seconds. There you go. So for music, garage or house? House. Uh, drum and bass or jungle? Uh, drum and bass. Are you into that stuff? No, my sister is. So oh, that's okay. probably uh, some 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 of the songs I ain't gonna lie, they do sound quite good. Mm. And sometimes they mix it with a little bit of reggae, so it sounds quite good. Normally, I'd say one question, but I'm gonna switch it up because Jamaica and Barbados. So, dance hall or soca? Dance hall, dude. That's mean, but yeah, dance. Soca's annoying. Dance soca's right. not annoying. Not, oh, I, it's, I suppose handle, it's, it's more I, carnival settings. I can and, handle yeah. one song. <laughs> Reggae or revival? <laughs> Reggae. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. So, hmm. O- oxtail, rice and peas or flying fish and cuckoo? Oh. That's, you can't, that's, that's, you can't choose. <laughs> you got to choose one. <laughs> Um, no, if you can't choose, you can't choose. If you can't choose, you can't choose. <laughs> uh, 
How always like take the fryer fish and the cuckoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fry fish. yeah, 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 yeah. I hear that, I hear that. I haven't had that in a while. No, I'm, I'm going to ask someone to that. make that Ooh, now. I need to taste that. What's it, what's it saying? It's serious, it's serious. Yeah? yeah, yeah, what's, yeah. What's, what's, wait, what's the cuckoo? cuckoo. What is um, oh, oh, you're not, you know, it's Banku. Okay. Banku. So it's Banku. So oh, okay. So the, that's my Ghanaians. Cuckoo is Banku. It's very nice. Okay. Yeah, I've, yeah and flying fish. It's, it's a fish, but it's very nice. So mm. you just have to, cool. you have to get one to know. <laughs> um, so, we're going to go with. All right, so Chinese or Indian takeaways? Chinese. Neither, to be honest. Wait for yeah. no. no, I don't really like either of them, to be honest. Well, I was going to do Ray and Nephew Appertons, but you've already picked. <laughs> so, we know that one. Uh, Evion or Volvic? Can I say neither? I'm Highland to Spring. Say that. Spring, yeah. you, need be, you need to be drinking Saka water. Yeah. Boss or Fiji? They're top range. But I heard they they're are, not, but they're, they're not really. They're, they're not, yeah, they that's are, what I heard they're as not well. Really. <laughs> well. They're not really. No, it's, no uh, it's like they've been tested and yeah, they come up like... You see the pH levels. Yeah. 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 What, about, so, what about sodium levels? They yeah, they're, 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 it's, it's close. It's Highland, almost, Highland Spring, just stick to Highland Spring. Oh, okay, <laughs> pH wow. is 7.8. I always check that on my bottles. Lucas Aid Sport or Wild Hydrate? Uh, Lucas A mm. Sport. Wow, well, Adric. Say why, Adric. I can just shout you to more <laughs> so for sponsorship. <laughs> for lifestyle, countryside or town? Uh, it'll be countryside for a little bit, then I'll get bored, then I'll come back to the town probably. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then last question. <laughs> Jamaica or Barbados that's for not, holiday? That's not, that's, holiday. that's not fair. For holiday. <laughs> for holiday. I didn't say to me. Yeah, yeah. For, for holiday. That's not fair. Say, say, still... say, say if someone can't to you yet, said, I've got two oh. tickets for you and whoever you want to take to go to Barbados for or a week Jama- or, or Jamaica, Jamaica for a week. Which flight are you taking? <sighs> go Barbados for a week. Mm. There you go. And there you have it. That's the end of the penultimate round. <laughs> so, yes. Um, so, normally we finish off with um, a question from the last guest, and then afterwards I'll ask you, but you can tell me afterwards, like in a few days, the question you've got for the next guest. So, okay. this one's from Ben Doughty. He said, "What's the worst thing you've ed- you've ever read about yourself on social media?" <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yet. To the, be are you somebody who like sees comments and remembers them? Because some boxers they'll see like hate and comments and like it's in their yeah. mind and it gets them like helps them motivate them through camp or stuff like that it doesn't to me it just it mm. kind of makes me feel like kind of good because mm. it's like it's you no know, cat williams like haters got their hate let them do mm. their job in it so mm-hmm. <laughs> if like they're hating on me because they ain't got nothing else in their life to do so yeah. i'm just like yeah see what you got to do i mean the worst it wasn't the worst comment i haven't really had like much bad mm. comments on that but i think for that first fight uh someone was like oh the ref stopped the fight early my my first oh, my pro- yeah. yeah prematurely and that but yeah. that was literally that was about that's it so all, far that's, that's so we, yeah well if that that's, just, that's the truth that's the truth okay um so yeah any want to give any shout outs to anybody i know you've I got there's an organization you're signed to where there's a few boxes on them i forgot what it was well, fli global that's the one yeah, yeah that's so you want to give a shout yeah, out to this one mm. no, no, uh this one. Oh, this one a uh, shout out to FLI Global because they've been my well, main and only sponsor for my whole pro game and without them I wouldn't actually be fighting as a pro because uh, the fights cost money and they've sponsored me through the whole way. So shout out to FLI Global and to all my coaches as an amateur, so down at Leighton County and down at Harringay, shout out to everyone. And let them know about um, your socials, where they can find you. How the fans could connect with you, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, well. My social, I'm not really active on. I've got like a Twitter, but I'm not really active on socials at the she's, moment. She's joking, so it's she's mainly joking. just she's mainly just Instagram. <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah. Like D that. underscore Alan official, and then you'll find me. That's the best yeah. one to contact me. I have got Facebook as well. Probably can so contact me through there. D double E underscore official. Alan. Alan. Oh yeah, oh, sorry. D Alan. D underscore he's Alan official. Is that rum hitting? See D. No, <laughs> Steady. <laughs> D double E underscore Alan. Sorry. D double E underscore <laughs> Alan you, official. <laughs> yeah. Mate, this is, get, get the kettle on, yeah? Um, and then also you can find us at Fight Fan TV Live on Instagram. Also make sure that you subscribe and share at Fight Fan TV Live on YouTube and also on TikTok. And you can find me also 
on Twitter at Danny Savvy Wright. And um, you want to give your... Post- and you can find me as well at LexoBem. Or just type that in on all platforms, it'll come in. And you can find me at Danny Glover underscore EST. And also, so yes, that is it, guys. It's another episode of the Neutral Corner wrapped up. Shout out to the sponsor, Treasure Boxing Club. And it's the Neutral Corner. It's Danny Glover. It's Big Lex. And we've been joined delightfully today by the current European World Awake champion, D. D. Allen. Yeah. And remember, guys, <laughs> persistence beats resistance. You know where it is. Exactly. <laughs>